Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson we will talk about protein making. So in the last lesson we talked about um, what genes contains, well they're contained in the chromosomes, but the genes contain basically the recipe to make protein. And those proteins play various roles in your body, and those proteins are made of amino acids that are assembled in a specific way. So let's talk about the whole process of making these proteins. All right, so DNA is stuck in the nucleus. It can never leave the nucleus, but the proteins are made outside of the nucleus. So there has to be a process to extract the information from the DNA and bring it outside to the ribosomes where the proteins are gonna be made. This is how it works. So first of all, we need RNA. Okay, so RNA will be the messenger, will be the link between the DNA and the ribosome. So the DNA gets, um, transcribed into RNA. I'll give you the more specific uh, steps in just a few minutes, but for now you just have to know that DNA basically gets translated into RNA. Now RNA has a similar structure as DNA. There's one difference. Rather than having a thymine attached to an adenine, there's a uracil attached to an adenine. Okay, so DNA has A, T, C, G. In the case of RNA, we have A, U, C, and G. So U stands for uracil. There are two types of RNAs. There's mRNA, called messenger RNA, and there's tRNA, called transfer RNA. I'll explain to you in just a moment what, each, what role each one plays. So this RNA, once it's made, it's going to go into the cytoplasm, and it's going to go find a ribosome. Okay, and it's inside the ribosome that these proteins are going to be made, where the amino acids are going to be assembled. Okay, so step number one, you have to know DNA is stuck in the nucleus, and so to extract the information, our cells create what we call RNA, which is kind of a copy of the DNA. But the RNA is allowed to go outside the nucleus and ends up in the cytoplasm, where there are ribosomes that will use information on the RNA to make the proteins. All right, so how does it work specifically? So the first step is called transcription of DNA into RNA. So the DNA unzips. Think of a zipper, you have two sides. So it opens up and then one side gets transcribed. What do we need, mean by that? Well, for every adenine, let's say, that is on the DNA, a uracil will be created. For every thymine that's on the DNA, an adenine will be created. For every cytosine that you have, a guanine will be created. For every guanine that you have, a cytosine uh, will be created. Okay, so just like we have here. So the DNA gets read and gets transcribed into a corresponding messenger, M, messenger RNA. Okay, so A will then become U on the mRNA, T will have the corresponding A, C will have the corresponding G, and G will have the corresponding C on the mRNA. Okay, so it's basically taking one side of the DNA and creating a matching strand of mRNA. So that's called transcription. So now that piece of mRNA gets out of the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm. And it goes and it attaches itself. So it's called attachment. That's step number two. Attachment of the messenger RNA to the ribosome. So the ribosome is like a reader. It reads the strand of mRNA. Now the strand is very long, it codes for several protein. So how does the ribosome know where to begin? Because it could be it's gonna start in the middle of the strand. Well, it finds what we call a codon or a triplet, triplet for three. So it finds three consecutive letters that are AUG. AUG always codes for the beginning of a protein. Okay, so the ribosome will found, find the codon AUG and will start reading from there to make a protein. All right, so that's step number two, attachment. Now, as it's reading, you have transfer RNA, so tRNA, that come and connect themselves, right? You can see it's like a lock and key situation. So you have the mRNA over here and you have the matching tRNA that comes and connects, always three bases at a time. So A with U, A with U, G with C in this example. Okay, but let's backtrack for a second. First step, transcription, the DNA gets transcribed into mRNA, 
mRNA goes into the cytoplasm, attaches itself to a ribosome, so attachment is step number two, and the ribosome knows where to start reading because it finds an AUG triplet on the long strand of mRNA. Okay, so next step. We have the translation. So this is where the tRNAs, over here, you've got three examples, come and attach themselves to the messenger RNA. Okay, so it's basically translating this strand into a chain of amino acid. So each transfer RNA transports one amino acid. So the amino acid here is specific to the triplet over here. So each, each, sorry, each tRNA has a specific codon, which codes for a specific amino acid. So when it finds its spot over here on the mRNA, it connects itself, and eventually you've got a chain, right? The amino acids get assembled as a chain. Once you have 100 to 200 amino acids, then the chain stops, and the chain folds onto itself and becomes a protein. Now, how does it know where to stop or when to stop? If the ribosome encounters specific triplets, it knows it's the end. So there's three different ones. It's either UAA, UAG, or UGA. When the ribosome sees that specific triplet or codon, it knows it's the end of the recipe. It stops translating and then your chain folds onto itself and becomes a protein and detaches itself and goes in the body to do whatever it's supposed to be doing, the protein that is, okay? So that's the whole process. So here you have it in the form of text as a summary. So step number one, there's transcription of DNA into mRNA. Then the mRNA leaves the nucleus, the messenger RNA, and it goes into the cytoplasm. Step number two, it attaches itself to a ribosome and it starts decoding the mRNA when it sees AUG as a triplet or codon. Step number three, translation of the mRNA by the tRNA. So these are the ones that carry the amino acids. Okay, so when they find their corresponding match, they connect their amino acid and it forms a chain. Now, when does it stop? The end of the transcription. Um, oh, sorry, this should say translation. End of translation. Let me correct that. The end of the translation occurs when the tRNA reads UAA, UAG, or UGA. So when the mRNA has one of these three codons, it tells the tRNA and the ribosome, okay, let's stop the process. So the amino acid chain will detach itself, will fold and will form a protein, and that protein will go into your bloodstream to its final destination to perform its specific task. So that's how the whole process works. Now, you may be asked to determine what the actual chain of amino acids will be. So if you um, are taking my class, you have at the end of your workbook a little chart like this. So you can look at the, uh, in the last few pages, you'll have a, a chart like this. And how it works is the following. You have the first base over here. You have the second base over here, third base over here. So let's say uh, you have AAU, okay, as a, as a triplet. So you're going to say A, A, and so you're going to go A over here, A over here, and let's find AAU. Oh, it's over here. AU codes for ASN. So higher up on that page, you have a chart that tells you ASN, what is the name for that? So let's say it was LYS, LYS is lysine. Uh, ASN, I don't know by heart what it is. So anyways, you have at the top of that page, you have each codon, each, uh, uh, sorry, amino acid, what its actual, actual uh, full name is. All right, so what do we do with that? Well, let's do an exercise together, just to make sure that you understand the whole process. So let's say I have this DNA strand at the top. The first The first thing we're going to do is transcribe it into mRNA. Okay, so what is the corresponding um, strand of mRNA? So we know that T gets translated into A, or the matching letter is A on the mRNA. A, the matching letter, is not 
T, it's U for uracil. So don't forget, for mRNA, we don't have Ts, we don't have thymine, we have uracil. So the corresponding here would be A, U, G, right? So A, U, G. So if we continue, corresponding letters, G, G, C. Corresponding letters for T, A, G would be A, U, C. Corresponding letters for the next triplet would be C, G, A. And lastly, for A, C, T, corresponding letters on the mRNA would be U, G, A. Okay, so that's how we transcribe. We just put the matching letter from the DNA to the mRNA, but we have to remember that the A's are connected to U's and not T's on the mRNA. So now, this over here, this strand, is going to leave the nucleus and it's going to go attach itself to a ribosome in the cytoplasm. And the ribosome will start reading. So, AUG, which amino acid does this correspond to? Let's go check. AU, so it's going to be in this column. AUG, it's the start of the chain. It codes for MET, which is methionine. Okay, so MET corresponds to AUG. So here, AUG would be MET. All right, GGC, what does it correspond to? G, and from the top, G, so GGC is GLY. Okay, GLY is the next amino acid. AUC, what's AUC? A and U. So let's go here. AUC, it's ILE, is the amino acid. ILE. There you go. CGA. Let's go check CGA. C. G. So we're going in this section. CGA codes for the amino acid called ARG, short for arginine, and UGA. And if you remember, UGA means, what does it mean? UGA, it means stop. Okay. So it does not code for anything. I put stop, but it really doesn't code for anything. It just means that the process would stop and this chain would fold onto itself, become a protein, and go in the bloodstream to its final destination. So at that point, you have the detachment of the chain or of the protein from um, the ribosome. Okay, so that's how you go about it. So I hope this was clear. If you have questions, by all means, ask. Don't be shy. And otherwise, I will see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.